to share with you in time. Be patient. But we had a really special visitor today. Andrew Wing uh, from North Carolina came and did a full assessment of Louise and all of her windows. And he's going to be moving in for the months of June and July, maybe August, to do a full restoration on all of her beautiful windows. And we had a chance to do a quick little interview with him on why you should keep your historic windows. It's something we feel super strongly about. And so we're going to let Andrew tell you why there's nothing like a historic window. Uh, my name is Andrew Wing. I'm from uh, Brevard, North Carolina, uh, close to Asheville. Um, so I restore windows and I've been doing that for about two and a half years. Um, I got started, I met a guy via Instagram actually, which was awesome connection wise. So his name is Michael Logan and he owns a company called Logan Restoration and Contracting in Asheville. And he took me under his wing, taught me the trade, taught me how to do everything. Um, so that kind of led to me having the passion for this work. I've always admired historic architecture and especially windows. They always um, definitely stuck out to me. And I just felt that it was my responsibility to continue to restore these windows um, just so that they can continue on for the next generation in history. With these windows, these are double hung windows, but these are actually special because these are a specific type of double hung window and it's, they're called box head windows. So what that means is that this lower sash actually opens up all the way to about this height and part of it goes up into a cavity in the wall so that you can actually walk in and out of the opening. And the reason they did that back in that time period was a lot of times different states and counties and cities had um, door taxes. So by having these windows, you could still walk out onto your porch and you didn't have to pay for a door tax. And another benefit to them, with them being so large, is you could open them up, open up all the windows, and that was your AC back then, especially down here in Georgia with how hot the summers are. Um, so with this, this is your upper sash. This is the lower sash, double hung windows made of two parts. And these are called double hung because they are both independently hung by ropes and weights and the weights are in a cavity in the wall. And basically this sash up here, it can go all the way down. So you could open it, leave the lower sash closed, or you can open the bottom sash and you can even open them both. So you have cross breeze from top and bottom. Um, a lot of times people would just open the upper sash because then the heat would rise and go out the top. So that helped with the airflow. On these windows, well, pretty much any old historic window like this, you have a series of parts. So the sides here, these are the styles all the way down. And then these are the rails you have the top rail. This is the meeting rail where the two sashes meet. And then you have the bottom rail, which is over here. Now, if you were dealing with just this sash, this would still be considered a bottom rail. But when they're together, that's the meeting rail. Then these are the muntins. So these are the actual pieces that the glass slides into. Now on the outside here, the glass would go in this way. <clears throat> this stuff right here, which is actually flaking off, is the glazing. So the glazing seals the opening. And you can't really see on these because they're still intact, but there would be little metal or sometimes wooden pins and they hold the glass in place. Then the glazing goes over it, smooth, kind of like a putty. And then once it cures, it's hardened and it can be painted and then it seals that glass. And that's what prevents airflow from getting in through your glass. Um, so those are the basic parts of the sashes. And then you have on the actual opening itself, this is all called the jam or the window frame. Now this is the blind stop. This is what keeps the upper sash from falling out whenever you open and close it. So this is considered exterior. Now this is the parting bead right here. This is what separates the two sashes in the middle from touching each other so they can slide evenly. 
And then on the interior, you would have another stop, which is your interior stop. And it has more of a detailed profile to match the interior trim. And that's what holds in the lower sash from coming out. I mean, the big key thing about restoring windows is they're going to match the house. They were designed to actually be in this house, specifically to this house. And that's something that you can't get if you order from a manufacturer or pick up a window at, you know, a Lowe's or a Home Depot. So these windows were built specifically to this size opening. Whenever they work properly, they fit and they function as they were intended to. Um, if you were to replace this window and buy a new window, you'd probably have to size down because you'd have to put it in this opening. So you're going to lose a lot of that definition, a lot of that glass. Typically, whenever they size down, you have to do 25% from size down to fit into the opening. And a common misconception is when you replace a window, you're not actually replacing the window, you're replacing the sashes. Because that whole window unit is going to go in here and pretty much attach to where the jam is. Because when you look at this, people always think, oh, these, these are the windows. They're the sashes, but the window actually consists of the whole unit. And the difference between this and a modern window is that the frame is actually built into the house. Now they can obviously be removed and replaced or restored or repaired if they're damaged, but basically now the modern windows are all just one unit. It's your frame and your two sashes, but it's all together. You can never repair them. You can never work on them. Whenever they fail, and they will, within 15 or 20 years, maybe 25 if you're lucky, um, they're going to have to be replaced again. That's why they call them replacement windows. <laughs> if you keep what you have, you're going to save a lot of headache. Um, a lot of people worry about the lead paint. That is a concern, but once the lead paint is removed safely, it's not an issue. Um, there are different types of paints that can encapsulate that too, so you don't even have to completely remove it all. But you can encapsulate the lead paint, and that pretty much protects everything. Most of the time, the interiors were not painted with lead paint. Um, the and I think that's a common fallacy, don't you? That everybody thinks that all historic paints are lead paints. Exactly. And really, they were exterior application paints yep. for the most part. Most likely, um, in most cases. So once this window is actually restored to its original function, it's going to look a lot better than any replacement window. And with the massive size of windows like this, with what you're going to pay to have, you'd have to have a special custom ordered window for this. With what you're going to pay for that replacement window, you're probably going to save thousands of dollars if you restore these windows themselves. And <clears throat> I think that that alone is worth you know, the trouble of doing it. Another thing that people are concerned about with historic windows is their energy efficiency. Um, there's a lot to that, but I'll kind of go over a little bit of it briefly. So the common misconception that I hear a lot, you know, old windows are inefficient, they're drafty, you know, that's where all your heating air losses. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, falseness to that. Um, I mean, in general, with a house like this, the walls were never insulated. So you're probably only losing about 10 to 15 percent of your air out of the windows themselves when they're, of course, sealed and don't have any broken glass. But with a restored window like this, with the proper weather stripping methods, we can get them to be, in a lot of cases, more efficient than, than most modern windows. Um, and there's several different weather stripping methods. There's spring bronze, which is definitely a really nice option. It's, it looks really beautiful. Um, it actually helps the sashes operate smoother. Um, and it seals pretty much the gaps on these sides. So any air before that you were losing is going to be stopped from that. Um, another thing is the fact that they're single pane. Nowadays, modern windows have insulated glass. But that poses a problem itself because then once those fail, that condensation can get trapped between the panes and then you start to have those fog up. Um, you won't have that problem with a single pane window unless you have a storm window over top of it. But in that case, then whoever installed your storm windows didn't install them properly because you have to have the ability for them to breathe. So windows like this are designed to breathe. I mean, a house like this in general is designed to breathe. They're never meant to be 100% airtight. You're not going to have 
100% efficient house. It's just not possible. Even with modern houses, I think that's not entirely possible. So that's a huge misconception, and that's what leads to thousands of windows being lost, you know, each year. Interior of the window, you have on the opening, this is the interior stop. Um, earlier I talked about the blind stop. The blind stop is what keeps the upper sash in place from falling out when you open it. This interior stop is what keeps this sash from falling out. And then if you look here, this is a, you can see the party beat a little bit better. So whenever you take these windows out, this interior stop comes out on both sides. And then you can get the upper sash out then this parting bead actually comes out because most of the time these were just pressed in place. Um, there's enough tolerance to where it perfectly holds it in. So once you take the parting beads out, then the upper sash can come out. Um, I think a lot of people think that the sashes are removed from the outside, but in the window industry, they're actually removed from the inside of the house and then all of the work is done from the interior. And then if you look a little closer here, you'll see this pocket. So this panel right here accesses the weight pocket. There's two screws. This screw comes out, that screw comes out. And then you can actually take these weights out because these ropes obviously are old, they've broken. So you can take the ropes off, replace the ropes. And then once you've done that, close that back up. And then you put your sashes back in after they've been restored and you attach the weights back to the sashes. And that's, pretty much how they operate is they're on that counterbalance system. So whenever you put it, that's a little harder to open and close right now, but that's how that system works. And you can see the sash cord right here. So that was our window hero, Andrew Wing. We can't wait for him to get started inside Louise. Uh, we can't wait to see the beautiful work that he's going to do here. And then pretty soon, he's gonna be doing historic window restoration all around the country. So uh, make sure you follow him on Instagram. It's at NC underscore preservationist to watch the incredible work that he's gonna do here in Louise and all around. Thanks guys.